once a person has had his fingerprints recorded, identity can be established even after death. Establishing identity of unknown dead and amnesia victims, proving a criminal history and identifying impressions left at the scene of a crime are all included in the science of fingerprint identification. On two surfaces only of the human body is the skin finely ridged, the palmer sides of the hands and the soles of the feet. Here we have an enlarged portion of the friction skin showing clearly the ridges and furrows. Spaced along these ridges are many tiny openings referred to as pores. Pores are outlets which discharge perspiration. Throughout the life of an individual under normal conditions, the conformation of the ridges remains unchanged. but the area they cover changes due to growth. A complete fingerprint for identification is a reproduction of the skin pattern of the first joint of every finger, including the thumb. The image or outline of a fingerprint is often produced on paper by the use of ink. In such an image, the black lines of various lengths and formations are the ridges. These ridge marks are used for classifying and coding. Technicians cannot correctly classify, search, and file fingerprint impressions unless the fingerprints are properly taken. The equipment required for the taking of fingerprints includes a glass slab or anything with a hard, smooth surface a soft rubber roller, a tube of black fingerprint ink, cleaning fluid to keep the equipment free from any foreign substance, and a cleaning cloth. A portable fingerprint stand, as used in the field, is fitted with complete fingerprinting equipment. With the stand in position on top of an ordinary table, the glass slab is inserted in its proper place. Also the fingerprint form. The stand is at the correct working level for recording fingerprint impressions. The permanent stand in general use should be at waist level to ensure that the fingers make the correct angle of contact with the slab. To ink the slab, place several daubs of ink across the center of the glass. Then roll the ink to a thin, even layer. To see that the ink on the glass slab is the correct thickness, hold it up to the light. It should appear a dark gray. Another way to check the amount of ink on the slab is to take test impressions on a piece of paper. This print is too dark due to excessive inking. Remove some of the ink by placing a piece of clean paper on the glass slab and passing the roller over it. Re-roll the slab. and make another test. Due to proper inking, the sweat pores and ridges have been correctly recorded. Note the clearness of this impression. This enlarged area gives a clear view of properly inked ridges. The sweat pores have not become clogged with ink. Another factor, before taking a person's fingerprints, Make certain that his fingers are absolutely clean. Don't hand the subject a cloth to clean his fingers. Foreign substance from the ridges may be rubbed into the furrows. 
A cloth may also leave particles of lint and dust on the fingers, preventing some of the ridges from coming in contact with the ink. Blank white areas in the fingerprint will result. It is better to have the person wash his hands in hot water. For hot water not only cleans the fingers, but helps to swell the friction ridges, thus producing clear, sharp impressions. Hand the subject fingerprint form C216 and have him sign it. Then insert the form in the holder. Have your subject relax and explain that you are going to roll his fingers from side to side on the glass slab. All that is required of him is to cooperate. The subject should stand facing the slab at approximately the length of his forearm. The operator stands to the left of the subject, holding the subject's finger close to his palm with the right hand, the left thumb and forefinger supporting the tip. The subject closes remaining fingers to keep them clear of the operation. Place the right thumb on its left side with the thumbnail perpendicular to the glass slab. Roll the thumb with a continuous motion and pressure until the thumbnail is once again perpendicular to the glass slab. Using the same technique, roll inked thumb on the form in its proper place. Continue by inking one digit at a time and transferring it to the form before going on to the next. Do not roll a finger over the same portion of the ink twice without having first re-rolled it with the ink roller. This is important. The rolled impression is a reproduction of the entire friction skin area. There is also the plain impression. In this type of impression, only the central portion of the friction surface is recorded. The plain impression is approximately one-third the area of the rolled impressions. The plain impressions are taken simultaneously, fingers extended and close together. Place the fingers lightly upon the ink slab, exerting even pressure. Lift the fingers from the slab and place them on the fingerprint form in their correct place. The thumb is inked in a similar manner and placed in its proper position on the form. Fingerprint ink can be easily removed by washing with soap and warm water. If any of the fingers are amputated, a notation to this effect must be made, giving date of amputation. This information is to be typed in the corresponding space. For example, amputated, second joint, June 1st, 1951. Aged persons may be fingerprinted more easily by allowing the subject to be seated comfortably during the operation. After the completion of every third set of fingerprints, clean the slab thoroughly. And clean the roller. The slab is then re-inked and rolled evenly over its entire surface.
In a case where fingers are found to be bent or deformed, and impressions cannot be obtained in the normal manner, it is frequently possible to use a cadaver spoon. A cadaver spoon is a light strip of metal, flat at one end and grooved at the other to hold a piece of paper for recording impressions. Ink the abnormal finger with the fingerprint roller. Then insert the paper in the grooves of the cadaver spoon. Rotate the spoon around the inked finger, employing medium pressure. Another method is to ink the reverse end of the cadaver spoon with the fingerprint roller. Then rotate the spoon around the finger with medium pressure. Insert the paper in the grooved end of the spoon. Then record the impression. Fasten the recorded impression to the fingerprint form in the space allotted to that particular finger. Where the finger is bandaged due to a temporary injury, such information should be typed in the corresponding space on the fingerprint form. When possible, the fingerprints should be retaken when the finger has completely healed. In cases where fingerprints cannot be obtained due to a permanent disability, notation to this effect should be typed in the corresponding spaces on the fingerprint form, giving particulars of disability. This form is the only one used for fingerprints. RCMP form C216. Information pertaining to the case and individual should be typewritten in their respective spaces. When used for criminal purposes, give date of arrest. If on remand, state whether on bail or in custody and date remanded to, place and court. Offense or offenses. If more than one offense, enumerate each charge giving the act and section number. If the subject has been convicted, state date of conviction, place and court. Offense or offenses. And sentence. If more than one charge, state whether sentence is to run concurrent or consecutive. Remarks. If any fingerprint has not been recorded, give reason for omission. If amputated, give date. The right side of this form is for the data pertaining to the individual and is self-explanatory. In the fingerprinting of dead persons, the fingers being in good condition, impressions are recorded by use of the cadaver spoon. When a positive identification is being considered for babies, the usual practice is to record the friction skin ridge formation of the sole of the foot. A thin film of ink is carefully rolled over the sole with a rubber roller. Another method is by bringing the foot in contact with the ink slab. The impression is then recorded by firmly pressing the infant's foot on white paper or a regulation form. To identify the infant with its mother, a single fingerprint impression is taken of the parent. This record should be made immediately after birth. In the taking of palm impressions, a half round piece of wood is used, covered at one end with smooth metal for inking purposes, the other end is rimmed to hold a sheet of paper. 
ink the metal portion and roll evenly. Then have the subject sign the paper. Insert the paper in the holder. With the subject's palm on the inked surface, apply medium pressure and roll the palm outwards to ink the heel portion. Place the palm on the paper and take the impression. Another method is to ink the entire palm by means of the fingerprint roller. Place a sheet of paper on a flat or slightly convex surface, then place the inked palm on the paper, applying even pressure, and rolling the palm outwards to ensure proper recording of the heel portion. All equipment connected with palm printing or fingerprinting must be thoroughly cleaned after use. Dirty equipment is often responsible for the recording of imperfect impressions. Persons responsible for the taking of fingerprints should know the essentials of the pattern area. The innermost point of the pattern is called the core. In the loop pattern, this is the innermost recurving ridge or some point within the innermost recurving ridge. In a whorl pattern too, the core is in the central area. The delta, or deltas, below and to the side of a pattern occur where the ridges separate to form the pattern. They are recognized by their triangular shape and are usually found near the outside portion of the pattern. It is very important when taking fingerprints that the recorded impressions be well-defined and correctly rolled. Clearly recorded impressions will enable the bureau technician to give the correct fingerprint classification. It is only when the operator in the field forwards well-defined fingerprint impressions to the bureau technician that correct information and identification so vital to police work may be made available.